lying on the back seat of that car, God spoke to him and said, Son, I'm going to heal you, and you're going to take the message of my healing power to your generation. They went to the tent meeting. Oral was propped up in a, a rocking chair, two pillows. He stuttered. He, he, he stuttered so badly that sometimes the kids at school would tease him, and he'd run home crying because he, he couldn't even say his own name. But at this tent meeting, 11 o'clock at night, he was the last one to be prayed for. The evangelist prayed like nobody he had ever heard pray. He laid hands on him and commanded that tuberculosis to come out of his lungs. And Oral said it was like a flash of light lightning. He jumped up out of that rocking chair. He started to run across that platform. He grabbed the microphone and he started to testify. Of course, the, the crowd. No trace of tuberculosis. So he pastored a church for 12 years. And he still wondered, where was this? I'm gonna, you're going to take the message of my healing power to your generation. Now, you have to remember Oral Roberts, I would say next to Billy Graham, he probably was the most powerful. He never told anybody how long he was fasting, but he was desperate. Why did he not see the power of God in his life and ministry the way Paul and Peter did? And his wife would find him in the backyard crying and sobbing at night. He was walking in his sleep. And he said, Evelyn, I keep seeing it before me a dream. And he said, I see the whole human race. It looks like a vast ocean. And every one of them is sick in some way. To the office of his little church, Pentecostal Holiness Church in Enid, Oklahoma. And he threw himself on the floor. And he told God, I have come to the end of my way. He said, I'm not going to get up off this floor. I'll die on this floor. Until, unless you speak to me. I want to know why I don't have this power to heal the sick. Uh, why am I not taking the message of your healing power to my generation? And he lost all track of time. He said, I don't know whether it was days, it could have been decades as far as I'm concerned. And suddenly God's voice spoke to him. And he said, it sounded like a military commander. He said, get up on your feet, get in your car, drive three blocks and turn right. And Oral didn't have a bit more sense than to do what God told him to do. He got up, he drove three blocks, and he turned right. And God said to him, from this hour, you will feel my power in your right hand. You'll know the names of demons and the number, and you'll have the power to cast them out. He said, it's going to begin happening at this time. So, he announced to his church that the next Sunday, there was going to be a citywide healing campaign in Enid, Oklahoma. And he rented an auditorium that seated 1,200 people. And he put out three conditions to God. And he said if these three things would happen, he knew he was called to take the message of his healing power to God's generation. And if these three things didn't happen, what a lot of people don't know was he, he had a job lined up as a clothing salesman. He, in other words, he was going to quit the ministry. And go were. He wanted 1,200 people to be present at that auditorium. He wanted enough money to come in the offering to pay for the rent of the auditorium. And he wanted enough people to be healed, a sufficient number of people to be healed in that service that he would know that he was truly called of God to take the message of his healing. In the auditorium in downtown Enid, Oklahoma, there were something like 1,200 people present. So the first condition was met. The rent on the auditorium was $60. This was back in the 40s now. And the offering was $63.03. Second condition was met. And Oral got up and preached his first healing sermon. It was called, If You Need Healing, Do These Things. And suddenly, in the middle of the sermon, the Spirit of God hit him. And he jumped from the pulpit down onto the floor. And he said, If you want to be healed, he said, Form a line to my left. He said, and the people started rushing forward. And the first person in the line was a German woman who had a paralyzed right hand. And her, her hand hadn't opened for 38, it had been paralyzed for 38 years. That was the first person he prayed for. He, he, he grabbed that hand and all of a sudden the hand was freed up. She started going like this. She started screaming and she started moving her hand. He said, bedlam broke loose. People started coming. He started laying hands on him. And by the time that it was done, he was 29 years old. He was soaked with sweat from his neck down to his shoes. But he said he stood there with all the people gone and he knew that God had called him to take the message of his healing power. 
uh, to his generation. And if any man ever made an impact on me, it was Oral Roberts. And when he died, he died December 15th of 2009, the newspaper said he had personally laid his hands on over two million people. One time... He said, when it came to healing the sick, he said, I probably failed or more... I failed on more sick people than any man that ever lived. For what reason? Because of the numbers. See what I'm saying? I said, what a statement to make. He said, I failed on more people than any man that ever lived. Because obviously not everybody got healed. In fact, probably the majority did not get healed. But God was using you just as a lesson that I had to learn. And I still have to learn it. You don't have to have all the, all the trappings of all the, the big organization. But God, God was using you just as much as... Uh, as Oral Roberts. We were getting testimonies last night. You, you didn't hear it, but we were getting testimonies about the word of knowledge. And we had several testimonies last night of healing. One lady said, you, you know, she and her husband were there. She said she had a pain in the neck. And he said, no, she was the pain in the neck. I said, <laughs> <laughs> but that little Filipino woman, so that, you know, that, 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 that was...